Sing louder. <laughs> He's nice and bright. All the a, a big shiny thing pointing at me. I thought it was a scope. <laughs> you know, get out of my yard! So, repeat after me. I'm going to teach you guys some Hebrew. Kadosh. Kadosh. Kadosh Ata. Kadosh Ata. In Kamoka. In Kamoka. Adonai. Adonai. And that means you are holy. You are holy. There's no one else like you. Right? So let's try that. Just like that is. We'll just sing the chorus first. Ready? Goes. Are you gonna sing it in Hebrew? Nope. Yes, we are. Ready? Yes. for me
sometimes the worship's rad, but this song's not working for that DJ drum set, right? Okay? Uh, Y'all's on it, but it's just not kicking on. We got to keep rolling. We like it. I like it. Yeah? yeah? So if you think about it, it's the, I want to read you the lyrics you need to hear. It goes, it goes, uh, Choose this day. Choose this day. Choose this day. But as for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord. We will serve you, Lord. We will not bow to the gods of men. We will not bow to the gods of men. We will worship the God of Israel. We will not bow to the gods of men. We will not bow to the gods of men. We will worship the God. Facebook that tells you how much of a friend of you guys are to me, how much I love you. Lately, I've been, God has given me the button to push, push some pause buttons on some stuff because I do got a lot of high energy. I'm really driven in life, right? And I get a lot done in a lot of places, but everybody wants me doing that. Not just my close friends here, but everybody, right? And um, I need time for my family. I need time for Jesus to talk to me more, you know? Amen. And I heard from him during my fast, and it's been pretty rad, but. As long as I stay clean and sober and ask God to keep me that way every day, right? Yeah. I'm good. Amen. Yeah. 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 Once I take a break, dude, I'm on fire again. So I want to get back to where there's a spring in my step and it feels like it's being in Hey, Jared, can I pray for you right now? Yes, please. They pray for me too. Yeah. I appreciate sure. that. Yeah. I want stuff perfect. And you know what? God's not a God of confusion. He just wants us to give him what we got, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Thanks, sir. Dear Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, I lift your son up to you, Gary, right here, Father, our, men, our mentor, Lord, and uh, we love him so much. But Father, you know, I just talked to him, it's so funny, about Moses earlier and how you appointed people for Moses and, you know, bring those people to Gary, dear God, that, uh, that, that could, yeah, he'll never like that, Lord, Father, but you could do this for him. I pray peace over Gary, dear God. I pray your anointing over him. And then you just continuously bring peace to his family. When he gets home, Father, I mean, he has a place of refuge. He has a place to regain his strength, Father, from you. And through you, Lord, we pray all this. Dear God, what Jesus has done for us on the cross, pray freedom. Dear God, he's a conqueror. So just put that blood in here, dear God, and just allow him to be the conqueror. The more so experience your peace. In Jesus' name I pray. I love you guys. Sorry for that. You too. We're fine. We're good. We're real. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I I just want to be a real human being. Amen. After 15 years in prison and cooking meth and dealing and just turning into this big old piece of you know what. It's God. I'll turn my life around. It's, it's been 17 years since August 1st. I've been clean. So I've been out of prison for 17 years. You know, and it's like I would only get 15. So I've been out longer than I ever did. But if God can change a knucklehead like me, man, and if you ever struggle with the drinking or the porn, all this, whatever, you got your things. Everybody does. Just give it to him. You know? Amen. I tried fasting and I had reconstruction, and it was like it drained me, dude. But I heard God speak to me in my ear. It was rad, you know. Right? Right. I never believed people would ever do that. But he heard God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He didn't come out of a bush and talk to you like Moses. Mm -hmm. I heard it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You know what I mean? Amen. I heard that in my That's head right. while I was eating a piece of toast during the fast. Because <laughs> right. I had to take the steroid medicine for my hand. Yes. And I heard it dude, clear as day. Praise God. Amen. I shared that here last time I was with Z, and I was like, it was deep, dude. And, uh, 
Hallelujah. What can I do for God? But listen to him. You know, yeah. he's saying press the pause and rest a little bit, buddy. Hallelujah. Come to me. You know, you are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd say that because I'll still go build a house after this. But, <laughs> Just desires that the Lord be. He loves the Lord. his kids so much. He loves and desires that we are too much time with each of us by ourselves. Amen. He sure does. It's that relationship with us. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship this holy name. Sing like this. Can't finish lyrics without falling to God. You know what I'm saying? Not sure. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit. He does now. Washing you out. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey God, thank you for this time that we get to have together to just come together and worship you and love you, God. And one of the ways that we get to do that is through the offering. And there's no specified amount. There's not even a necessity to give every time, but you call us to um, to what we can give God. It's really just to honor you for all that you give us in our lives, truly. You're always providing for us, and you're always there for us, and we are so grateful. So this is just a way we can do that. And even if it's just 
the giving of our hearts, not even a cup of money, but just the giving of our hearts, that's literally what it's about. So that's what we want to do right now, is just give our hearts to you in whatever capacity, because you deserve it. You are worth it, God, and we want to honor you and love you. In your name, your holy, amazing name, God, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. The splendor of the King. This guy bent over and he was in obvious pain. The old man had a cane 
hobbled laboriously through the sanctuary and into the pastor's office while the choir was practicing. Ten minutes later, he came out, walking upright and moving with grace and speed. Good gracious, the choir director. Did the pastor heal you by faith? No, the old man said with a smile, he just gave me a cane that wasn't six inches too short. Okay, no more jokes today. <laughs> I, I, I can tell these are really going over well. Okay, some of you guys are sitting there like a deer, looking at like a deer in the headlights. Anyway, we're going to pray. This morning, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. How many know that that is a, a, a topic that is really needed in the body of Christ today? Forgiveness, right? Because we all, we all say, Oh, I forgive you, bro. I forgive you, I'm sorry. But what does it mean? How does it work, right? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you that you're with us. We pray that you would bless your word, that you would speak to us through it, that you would do a work of your grace in our hearts and in our lives. God, make your word come alive to us and just change us God help us to just be dialed in like we've never been dialed in before as Christians as believers we pray that you touch your word that you would just do an amazing work of your grace we love you we give you honor we give you praise and God above all I pray that you would hide me behind the cross of Christ that Jesus would be exalted in this place we love you and we thank you and it's in your name we pray amen, amen. You know, within the framework of being in a ministry or even any type of Christian relationship, whether it be friends, boyfriends and girlfriends, married people, uh, employee relationships, etc., there is a definite need to know how to forgive one another. Because if you don't learn the art of forgiveness and being forgiven, then Satan will use circumstances and attitudes to try to destroy your relationships and or your ministry. So there's a few questions that I want to bring to you this morning. I'd like you to think about these things. Number one, what is forgiveness? What is forgiveness, right? That's a question. So I'm not going to answer the question. I want you to think about it as I'm sharing these things with you. So number one, what is forgiveness? Number two, how many times should I forgive a person? How many have ever said, I forgive you, and then the person does the same stupid thing over again, and then you get extremely frustrated because you said, bro, I forgive you, but now you're doing it again, right? How many have ever been that, down that road before? Okay, and maybe it's you. <laughs> maybe you're the one that had to ask for forgiveness. And then you did the same stupid thing again, and you let somebody else down because you don't want to drop the ball that time. Okay, so that's the second question. Number one, what is forgiveness? Number two, how many times should I forgive a person? Number three, what will happen if I choose to not forgive someone? I want you to think about those three questions, right? Because when somebody hurts us, we feel completely justified in lashing out, don't we? How many have ever been hurt before? <laughs> Get your hands up, you liars. <laughs> okay, if you, you've been hurt before, and then you lashed out at that person that hurt you, and you felt justified in what you were doing. Of course we do, okay? Human nature, look. And sometimes we get this attitude, well, you don't know what they did to me. Or I'm right and they're wrong, and I'm just gonna, and I'm not just gonna let it go. And then we harden our hearts and we harbor bitterness in our lives, don't we? If we don't let it go, it ends up hurting us more than it hurts anybody else. I'm just I'm not preaching to the choir here, okay? I'm, I'm preaching to myself here, okay? And the bitter fruit of unforgiveness begins to eat away at our peace with God, at our relationships with others, and even how we feel about ourselves. 
How many have ever felt that before, right? You, you hang on to something and it's a bitter pill. And you start feeling bad yourself because you're not forgiving somebody else. Or you're in this, in this uh, system of letting it go, taking it back. Letting it go, taking it back. If I had something happen in my life. I was a young Christian. Young Christian. I'd only been saved for, uh, I want to say, maybe five years. And somebody did something that just devastated me. They violated a trust that I had, a deep, deep, deep trust that I had. And I was devastated, okay? I almost got homicidal. I didn't say suicidal, did I? <laughs> I almost got homicidal. I almost killed a couple of people. As a young Christian, somebody violated me so bad, and I was so hurt that I actually had plans in my little pea brain that I was going to take out a couple of people. How do you know that God's will is not for you to be a Christian and want to kill people? <laughs> How many have ever felt like you wanted to kill somebody before? Get their hands up! I am not alone in this room! Dude, when I said that, you should have went like that. <laughs> I'm serious, right? All in. All in. Hello. I, I have close friends that have been burned, and they just want to retaliate. And I have to talk them down. Okay, I came, most of you guys and gals know that I came from the outlaw motorcycle world. Okay, before I became a Christian, I was an outlaw biker. I was... A drug addict, drug dealer, carried guns, all that in a bag of chips. And I was on my way to trying to become a member of a 1% outlaw motorcycle club. That was me before I became a Christian. So I got saved on May 5th, 1977. In 1982, when I got violated terribly, somebody totally blew every ounce of trust that I had in them. How can I say that? Because that's exactly what happened. And there were two people involved. And I was devastated. And I gotta tell you that I flipped a switch. I went from being Jesus Fred to the Grim Reaper. That's how quick it happened. That's how, and Jesus said that if you thought it, you did it. So I actually killed two people in my thought life. How many of you have ever done that before? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Jesus said, if you think it, you did it. Wow, I could write a book. I could make a movie. I really could. Okay, I was devastated. I, I was broken. It totally offended me. And like cancer, if it is not surgically cut out, by God's word, his spirit, and his principles, it will spread to every area of our lives. It really will. Unforgiveness. If someone offends us, and then God deals with their hearts, and they truly repent, then God admonishes us to forgive them. And you know what? I didn't want to forgive them. I wanted to take them out. I'm not kidding you. And I'm honest enough to tell you that I had a loaded gun under the seat of the car and I had one of the people in the car and I was taking him for his last ride and he didn't know it. And I had a loaded 38 under the seat in my car. And so I am at a quagmire because I, I'm a young Christian guy, man. I'm not supposed to be thinking like that. I'm not supposed to be processing like that. I'm supposed to forgive. I'm supposed to love. I wanted to kill somebody. I was basically taking them for their last ride. And I started praying. And I started asking God what to do. And he said, go to your pastor's house. Right now? <laughs> go to my pastor's house? That's not my plan. I'm taking this guy out. I'm going to put a bullet in him. 
That's, I don't want to go to my pastor's house. God said, go to your pastor's house. So I went in. I knocked on the door. It was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Knocking on the door. My pastor opens the door. And he goes, Fred, what's up? And I go, I'm about to do something really bad to somebody. And he goes, why? And I said, because I have been dragged over the coals. I am totally justified in what I'm about to do. And I'm taking somebody out. And he goes, you're a Christian. You can't do that anymore. And I went, oh, I knew there was a catch. Because <laughs> I, I, I thought, maybe Jesus will forgive me after I kill this person. And I got to tell you something. He, he hit me because he didn't say Jesus won't forgive you. I had an eight-month-old daughter at the time. And he said, so you got a great plan. You're going to kill a couple of people. And then what's going to happen to you, daughter? And it was like, bam! Like slapping me awake. I'm not kidding you. I started crying like a baby. And I said, I guess I can't kill somebody. But I was ready to do it. Okay? Even as a young Christian that was confused about what was going on in my life, it was hardcore. Then I went and talked to my pastor, another pastor. And I told him, I said, you know, I had something done to me that was so unheard of that I can't forgive this person. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, I can't forget him. And I'll tell you what he said in a couple of seconds, but I want to take you to a couple of scriptures. The first one that we're going to go to is Matthew chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 14 and 15. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 14, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, Neither will my, will your father forgive your trespasses. So this is a this is not an option. This is not multiple choice. Okay, <laughs> you can't go. Uh, I want to be forgiven, but I don't want to forgive. It's not a multiple choice thing. Okay, it is a command from God that if we want to see His forgiveness for us and His blessings in our lives then we have to forgive, okay? And it's not an easy thing to do. But I'm gonna tell you that through God's love and his help, it can be accomplished because God is the fountain of forgiveness. We must pray, we must ask him for his power to allow us to change, okay? Only God can change us. and. I used to tell people quitting drugs was easy. I did it a hundred times. That's a joke. <laughs> okay, quitting drugs was easy. I did it a hundred times. What do I mean? I quit, then I go back. Then I quit, then I go back. Then I quit, then I go back. And it was like a revolving door. You know what I'm saying? Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt, right? So if we're sincere and we continue in asking God, for his help, then his love, his grace, his peace, and mercy will flow down to us from his throne. And you know, if we've offended someone else, the Bible tells us what we need to do is that we need to go to that person and we need to seek their forgiveness. And that's pretty intense, right? It's very hard to go to somebody and ask them to forgive you when you've been a jerk. It really is. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that, and got the t-shirt, and that's why I'm not going to tell you every single time that that ever happened in my life, but in Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, it's an interesting verse. Proverbs chapter 18, we're going to look at verse 19. Proverbs chapter 18 in verse 19, it says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. 
And contentions are like the bars of a castle. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. That's pretty powerful, right? A strong city. Ever gone up against a strong city? It's pretty hard to take it down, isn't it? When your brother is offended with you, it's hard. It's hard to go to them. It's hard to get that situation restored, isn't it? Again, been, that, been there, done that. It says an offended brother is basically hard to win back. But if that person is hearing from God, then it may take some time, but they may, they will forgive you. Okay? And if somebody repents, that's when it gets real dicey, right? If somebody repents, you don't want to forgive them, but they repent. They ask God to forgive them. They go, God, I'm sorry that I hurt this person. I didn't mean to hurt this person. I am really sorry. Guess what the Bible says that we are to do? Right, forgive them. And it's still difficult because we're still human, right? And again, we get that idea. What if they do it again? What if they do it again? Same thing, again and again and again. And we just go back and forth with those kind of issues. In uh, Luke chapter 17, we're going to go over there for a minute. Luke chapter 17, we're going to look at verses 3 through 4. And it tells us, take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. So the Bible says it's okay to rebuke people. If they, if they violated you, if they sinned against you, it's okay to rebuke them. Then it says, and if he repents, forgive him. That's the hard part. <laughs> I like the rebuke part. <laughs> How many like rebuking people when they burn you? <laughs> Hello, I'm really good at that. <laughs> I can do that all day long. And then it says, and if he repents, forgive him. Here's where it gets really intense. Verse four, and if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, returns to you saying I repent you shall forgive him and the apostles said to the Lord increase our faith <laughs> I want you to think about that okay seven times this guy sinned against me I went he said I'm sorry and God said I need to forgive seven times in a day that would be a little bit more difficult, wouldn't it? That's why the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. Hello? I'd be saying, are you kidding? Are you really serious? I don't think so. Look at that, verse 4. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said to him, the Lord, increase faith. Our faith because without faith you can't do it you can't do it and God knows that amen God knows that he doesn't ask us to do anything that we can't do it's a choice does that mean that you set yourself up to get stabbed in the back again and again and again no it does not mean that okay Matthew chapter 18 let's go over there for a minute Matthew 18, are, are you guys getting any, anything out of this at all yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, seriously. Because we've all had issues with forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. It says, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called the little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one 
little child like this in my name receives me. Verse 6. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. So that tells me you don't want to mess with little ones. Amen? Amen. You don't want to mess with kids. You don't want to mess with people that are young. <laughs> Harley's going like that. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I see you, baby. <laughs> She's going like that. How cool is that, right? The little ones know better than we know sometimes. And again, it says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone, that's like a hundred pounds, okay, were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because offenses for offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Then it gets kind of graphic. It says, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. If it is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. That's pretty intense, right? So God said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Whack it off. Throw it away. I, I don't think he's saying that literally. He's basically saying, whatever causes you to sin, get rid of it. Amen? Amen. How do I know that? <laughs> because I read the Bible. Here it says, and if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. Boy, we'd have a bunch of people with pirate patches on right now. <laughs> Wouldn't we? If your eye causes you to sin, you look at something you're not supposed to look at, and you go, hey, I like that. I need that. <laughs> Pluck out your eyeball. Put on a pirate patch. Hello. Then it says it is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. So again, it's figurative. Get rid of the problem, right? It's not telling you to yank your eyeball out of your head and throw it away. It's saying whatever is causing you to sin, stop doing it. That's the message, amen? Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Now it's going to get into the brass tacks of forgiveness. The brass tacks of forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18, memorize this, okay? Starting in 15, it says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Do you notice that it says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell everybody on Facebook. Yeah. It doesn't say that, does it? Guess what it also doesn't say? It, it doesn't say if your brother or sister sins against you, go tell everybody else. Gossip all over the planet. That is the human reaction. You wouldn't believe what this person did to me. Let me tell you all about it. And you know what? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Don't even go there. It says go to them alone and tell them. And if they hear you, you gain your brother. Isn't that powerful? I'm going to read it again. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, 
Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you gain your brother. But if he will not hear you, take one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. So, in other words, I go to somebody, I go, hey bro, you did this to me, it was really uncool, and they go, whatever. Then it says, get somebody else and go to them again. Don't gossip. Don't create havoc. Don't make things worse. Get somebody else to that will back you up of what is said in the conversation. And you know, I got a brother sitting in the room, Paul Sinbad. He was one of one of my boys here for many, many years. And there were a few times when somebody offended the snot out of me, I had to go talk to him and they blew me up. Then I had to grab Sinbad and go, bro, I need you to come with me. We gotta go confront this situation because this guy is blowing me off. <laughs> Didn't that happen multiple times? Hello? At least a dozen, at least a dozen, because he was with us for years and we had to go confront situations. And is it uncomfortable? Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but that's the next step in the word of God. You go to them first, if they don't hear you, you get another brother or sister, you go to them again. Give them an opportunity to get it right, right? Then it says, and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to even hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. I gotta tell you, we had a guy one time when our church was larger, we had probably 50 people here. And there was this guy that decided that he wanted to hit on all the cute girls in the church. And I had to go talk to him. And I told him, I said, bro, you have to knock it off. You can't do that here. And we had young ladies, we had young men, we had a lot of different people that were coming. And this guy went for the weak ones, the ones that had whatever problem they were having, he went to try to be the solution to their problem. And I had to call the guy out. And he was supposed to be a minister. He's the leader of a Christian biker organization now. And I had to go tell the guy, knock it off, or you can't come here anymore. He wouldn't listen. He kept doing it. And he offended at least five or six different women. And I finally got to the point where I said, you can't come to our church anymore. Why? Because you don't negotiate with wolves. That's why. Okay? If I'm the pastor, I'm the shepherd, I'm supposed to be looking out for the young ladies and the young men in our congregation. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And if somebody comes in and they are a snake and they are trying to get into the hen house, that's when I turn into the Grim Reaper. I'm just letting you know. I had to do that. I had to throw the guy out of our church. And now he's somewhere else doing his thing and he's still doing the same kind of stuff. That's the sad part. He's going to another church where nobody knows him and he's doing the same stuff. It's terrible. Totally terrible. So anyway, you give them opportunities to change. If they truly repent, they will change the course of their lives in regard to offending you, but a cheap, oh sure dude, I'm sorry, but I'll do it again if I get the chance. Premeditated sin is not what the Lord is talking about here. What do you do if somebody sins against you and they do not acknowledge it or repent? It is found in Matthew 18, we just read it. You go to them, they won't repent, then you bring somebody else, then they won't repent, then you tell it to the church, then you back it up. And at some point in the game, you have to fish or cut bait, right? If somebody will not repent. And, but I believe that you need to forgive anyway, but not leave yourself open to being burned again, right? 
Well, <laughs> forgive and be careful. <laughs> Not forgive and forget, because a lot of times we can't forget, okay? But we can be careful. If somebody burn, if, there's an old saying, burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice, shame on me, <laughs> right? How many times are you gonna let it go on? Okay, you can't just keep letting it go on and on and on and on. And like I said, if they truly repent, then you forgive. And I got to tell you what happened when I was that young Christian and somebody betrayed me and I went to some pastors in Costa Mesa. One of them was Chuck Smith. You guys know who he is. He was a pastor of a thousand churches. I went to him and his assistant pastor, Pastor Romaine, and I said, I can't forgive. I choose not to forgive them. And I'm gonna tell you what they said to me. How many times has God forgiven you? <clears throat> Game over. <laughs> Why don't you think that through, right? I don't wanna forgive them. I can't forgive them. They said, how many times has God forgiven you? And I started thinking back. A shopping list. You start playing the tape back, don't you? Think about how many times has God forgiven you? Once, twice, a dozen, hundreds, thousands, right? We play the tape back and we go, wow, God has forgiven me for a lot of stuff. So I want you to think about that because as soon as he said that to me, it pierced my heart and I had no defense. Because God has, given, God has forgiven each one of us for so many things in our lives. Impure thoughts, impure motives, actions that are not okay. Do I need to go on? <laughs> right? We think about that and we go, wow. Impure thoughts, impure motives, impure whatever. And it gets really intense. And again, you don't have to open yourself up to abuses again, whether they are physical or emotional, right? You don't have to be the, the rug that gets walked on over and over and over again. You avoid them. You pray and you move on. Ask God to forgive them. Ask God to forgive you. Let it go. And if they keep doing it, then you got to tell them again. Not okay. I'm not going down that road. I'm not going to open myself up to you again because you can't be trusted. Well, I forgive you. Sure, I forgive you. But I'm not going to let you burn me again. How many times have been burned, people been burned multiple times by the same individual? <laughs> oh, over and over again physically emotionally something and God says quit being a doormat amen, amen. quit being a doormat don't go there and you know sometimes most people think that God is some type of cosmic monster they think that he just sits in heaven waiting for us to make a mistake so he can send lightning bolts down on each of us when we blow it that's not the God that we serve. That is not the God that we serve. I'm going to give you a scripture in Exodus. Okay, way back in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 34. It's a very powerful verse, and it speaks to our hearts. Exodus chapter 34. We're going to look at verses 4 through 7. It says, so he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, God merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, 
forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Pretty intense. So God is compassionate. God is gracious. God cuts us slack even when we don't deserve it. Right? He does. He is slow to anger, not quick to jump on you when you blow it. And it says, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love. He forgives wickedness, rebellion, and sin. That's the God that I serve. Hello. God is an amazing God. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 43. Let's go over there for a minute. And we are wrapping it up. Some of you clock watchers. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> There's always one in every group. When's he going to be done? He's been going for a while. You're sinning. <laughs> I'm kidding. Isaiah chapter 43. This is a very powerful verse. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. It says, I, even I. And he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. God blots out our transgressions. Now, I want to give you a visual. Okay, how many went to school? Everybody went to school, right? How many of you have ever seen... A teacher writes something on the board and then they take an eraser and they erase it and then you can still see a little hint of what was there before because they're using an eraser guess what if they wet the sponge and then they wipe the board it's gone and I'm going to tell you what the word is it's exelphi in the Greek and it means just as if it never existed. That's what God does with your sins. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. Are you thankful that it's not the eraser? <laughs> and you can still see the lines on the book, on the chalkboard. I'm thankful that I can't see a trace of it. It's been exemplified. It's gone. It's obliterated. It's blown off the map. Hello. That's the kind of forgiveness that I need. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want to remember the things that I did before. Bad idea. Okay, this one's even better. In the book of Psalms, we're going to go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, we're going to begin at verse 8. This is amazing. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Somebody better say amen. amen. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as high as the, that, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Now, I want you to know something, that east and west never meet. They are two infinite lines. East is always going to be east. West is always going to be west. It's not like a globe. You go east and then you keep going until you get to west. They're infinite lines. And God has one heck of a pitch in our because it says that he casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. Isn't that awesome? They don't come around to bite you in the rear again. They are infinite. They're gone. God forgives it. It's gone. Infinitely gone. East never meets west. That's powerful, right? How many are thankful for that verse? Hello. Matthew chapter 5. We got two more verses. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 23 and 24. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 23. It says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So we go to God in prayer, and God says, you got somebody that you have something against, or you got somebody that did something to you? Go get it right with them first, before you bring your gift to the altar. Isn't that powerful? So guess what? That means I can't hold grudges. I have to go, I have to make it right. One way or another, I gotta do something. And I'm gonna tell you what forgiveness does. It is the ultimate healing in a relationship. Forgiveness opens the door to unconditional love. Forgiveness also sets you free. It brings tremendous love into the situation. Forgiveness from God does what? It cleanses us. It restores us, it changes us, and it sets us free. Isn't that powerful? I'm gonna say it again. Forgiveness from God cleanses us, it restores us, it changes us, and it sets us free. Last verse for this morning is in Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, we're gonna begin in verse 12, and it's talking about the character of a new creation, a new man, a new woman in Christ. Amen? Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving. Bearing with one another, that, that means putting up with one another. Wow, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Some people I don't want to put up with. Here, this is what it says, verse 13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So it says to forgive one another as God has forgiven you. And you know the church needs to be a community of forgiven people, being forgiven individually by God and forgiving one another. So this morning, if you are holding any kind of bitterness against anyone, you need to let go of it. You need to give it to the Lord. So let's take a moment to reflect on where we're at with God in regard with regard to others, and let's pray. God, we come before you. We ask you to search our hearts. If we have any unforgiveness toward anybody else, we pray that you would help us to forgive. And God, if we have any sins in our lives that we need you to forgive, then we ask you to forgive us. We ask you to cleanse us. We ask you to lead and guide us. So if you want to pray this prayer with me, feel free to do it. God, I love you. God, I failed you. God, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me clean with your precious blood. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Set me free from the chains of unforgiveness. And God, just purify me. 
Help me to be more like your son. I love you. I give you honors. I give you praise. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, church. We got Gary and Al and Wendy. We're going to come share a little song with Wendy. So here. No, I think Sinbad's going to sing with Sinbad's going to sing with me. Sinbad's going to sing. What we sing? <laughs> Simeon didn't know he was going to sing. Now you can ask God to forgive you. Hey, who loves your soul? Jesus. <laughs> Let's sing that one. Great.